All right, we have a quick unboxing here or unbagging of a new product to me, okay? Maybe not so much new in terms of type, relatively new in terms of type, but different grouping here. Okay, so you know I've been enjoying working on the uh, printable holographic vinyl sticker paper. That's the longest title of any type of uh, products I ever use. Um, but this one is a different grouping of different patterns here. Okay, I have two packs right here. So 10 sheets uh, of this one right here. So the 10 sheet one has five different patterns and I think two of each, okay? The 25 and 60 sheet, I think, there was 25 of the same sheet or something of that sort. Okay, so I'm going for the, uh, the ink it, or is it Jenga? I don't know, I'll put a link to it below. But this is the, again, the sticker paper. So um, inkjet and laser printers, okay? If you're gonna be using it in those types of situations, you know, uh, look at the instructions online and just make sure that you have a compatible printer. But let's take a look at the patterns right here, okay? Um, like I said, I, I used to think that this type of thing would just be too loud for scenes. Now I just, I have a feeling that uh, there isn't anything too loud anymore for me. I don't think, I, I don't know. But let's take a look at this one right here. So patterned, holographic, and it's this, I don't know, it looks like like fish scales to me or something like that if I was to relate it to something. Pretty mellow in terms of the coloring on it. It reminds me of the um, the coloring of the Recollections um, holographic foil. Uh, yeah, right here. This one right here. See this one right here? It's a lot more mellow than the more hot looking, uh, you know, high intensity and contrast types of foils. Okay, so this one's a little bit more mellow. Sometimes these are more applicable in terms of different types of scenes, okay, um, than that other crazy one because you have to kind of match the intensity a lot of times in the surface that you're using to make it applicable for a landscape, okay? Otherwise, it just gets kind of swallowed up. Uh, that's just my opinion. Okay, let's see, two sheets of it, okay? So pretty cool. Um, I don't know, it reminds me of like, Like a, yeah, like like I don't know, like like a salmon or something like that. Um, the scales and whatnot. I could see it being used for whatever, you know. I mean, these types of holographic effects for me are the things that um, are really great for things like skies. Okay, you get those different types of colors and whatnot up there. Stylized, yes, but exciting, yes. Um, and applicable, yeah. Um, if it takes the inks, just like I've been using uh, to this point, these will be really fantastic. Okay, so a very fine, kind of more glittery surface. Same type of um, mellow coloration right here. Very fine, but patterned. You see these kind of looping types of um, uh, patterns on here. It's a real different feel than the previous one. Well, I don't know about real different feel, relatively speaking, okay. I mean, when you compare these two, like a white piece of cardstock, maybe not so different from one another, but in terms of just the, f I was about to say foil, but the vinyl holographic look, quite different in terms of the uh, the scale of this, you know. Like I said, this one looks like fish scales, but I'm talking about the, uh, the size here. So pretty cool, look at that right there. You can have like a, northern light type of thing going on in the sky maybe okay let's move on here okay just straight uh vinyl holographic the typical one right here there's a couple little dents in it that i can see all right like that so subject to potential denting upon um transport all right like it, this was just uh shipped in a uh like that envelope like you saw a padded envelope so, you know, you might get these types of things. Those types of things like that, though, um, it won't be quite as visible 
on something that's very patterned though. Yeah, I, I could see it in here. It's a little bit of a dentine, not, not too bad. You know, not to the point of unusable or anything like that. And again, this is sticker paper, so. Uh, I always have a hard time getting these things started. There we go. This, so, you know, when you take this thing off like that, you know, those little things should smooth out. Um, because largely, a lot of times it's the, uh, the backing on the paper. Uh, that's done it. You can see it right there. Okay, so moving on. All right, now this is another one. Um, this is another one that I was really excited about. Those first two for sure. This one, not so much because I've used that type of thing before, although that looks pretty good. Yeah, let me see this right here. I wonder if those little dents are going to affect what's going on if I use it in the sky. Yeah, well, there's some trees in front of it. Okay, so like this one's like shattered glass or something like that. Okay, a lot more kind of electric looking. That would be really kind of interesting in a fall type of situation like this where you have these colors and the uh, trees going on. But you can pick up some of these colors right here and incorporate it in with your color scheme on your landscape maybe. Or, you know, I mean, the easiest thing to do on these types of things where there's a lot of kind of crazy, super busy types of patterning on this, you just stamp over it with um, black um, dye based, whatever, whatever media you want to use. I'm pretty sure if this is the same type of emulsion coating on here, it'll take just about any type of ink. Um, the one that I didn't know would dry on here are the, uh, oil based pigment inks, but the VersaFine Clear dried on here just fine. So I was really happy about that. Not on here, but on the, on the previous one that I used. Okay. So pretty cool. Um, I don't know, what, what do you think? We can use this one for like a, I don't know, it's really impressionistic. So I don't know, I can use it for like a scene with a lot of fall tones where it kind of just incorporates in with that or we can go with, uh, like I said, just monochromatic if not just completely grayscale or black, you know, as uh, images. and in uh, front of this type of thing. Okay, last one here. Okay, it's pretty much the same type of patterning as my starry one from before. A little bit more mellow, I would say. This, uh, by and large, except for this um, shattered glass looking, I don't, I'm just calling it the shattered glass. It's, it's largely the same. Let me see, this is the one that I've been using before. Okay. Okay, see, here's the difference between these two. This one has higher um, intensity and contrast here, okay? Um, and this one, this one was the uh, koala. This one is, again, <laughs> it's inket, uh, I guess. That thing in the front of it, kind of, it sounds like jinket or something like this. So a lot more um, pastel-y like this one, okay? So a lot more mellow, um, softer looks okay still pretty exciting and whatnot but just more mellow you can probably do more color on top of this and this could be just like a i don't know just kind of a more mellow looking sky or whatnot patterning in your sky um where it's not you know so kind of a oh overpowering i should say um I don't know, the imagery, I don't, I'd put our color imagery up against this any time. So this could be much more of a subdued type of partner with the other one, as opposed to it being complete about this. Now I'm saying that, and here we have this holographic kind of glittery type of thing that's sparkling like crazy. Definitely a lot louder than, you know, a piece of white foil, but just rather tame by the standards of a kind of contrast and intensity that I've been working with lately. So I don't know, I, I, I like this in conjunction with it. I didn't want it to be the same thing. Otherwise there would have been no reason to get this, you know, well, we have these other packs right here, but um, um, I like having something different. Okay, it looks like the same patterning, but the holographic part of it is just different. God, that one is insane there now I look at it. So look at that those different types of colors across that. Isn't that really fascinating? It's like, if you had this like on a wall or something like that, it'd be really cool as like a 
kind of a stained glass or something like that. Um, or a skylight, you know. But interesting. We'll have to find out something to use these with. You can kind of use these in uh, in uh, somewhat of a theme, like something like this. You know, you have this for the sky, and then you have someone, like a fisherman, catching a, a fish or a bass or something like that in the background where, from a thematic standpoint, you know, something like that does look like scales a little bit to me. I don't know, that's what I see. Uh, if you know or try to think of when I'm trying to describe it so you can do something thematic with that with these things like um, broken you know shards of glass you can make um, like a scene like with uh, mountains or something like that in um, like an you know snowing or winter type of scene you know with a lot of ice and it's kind of um, thematic of that sort of um, feel you know shattered um, uh icicles or something like that breaking on the ground you know um that type of thing but i don't know i mean it depends on what you see in there i mean you you don't have to go off theme you know or something like that it could just be you know something that you're just uh, stamping on but um kind of from a thematic standpoint it can bring in that little bit of extra kind of um uh content or you know whatnot into the into the piece i really like this one too this little shimmery looking surface like that and i'm just talking about stamping on these things you know i mean this these things are for um you know printing out things you know uh you know with your printers so you, you could certainly use it for that one of the good things about this let's say you do a scene on there um i would do this first before you um uh trying to think did this come out of this pack right here um oh here it is right here um i would i would print on there first like quotes or something like that um you know and since this is inkjet printable i mean you can print it whatever you want you can customize your little label you know merry christmas from whoever and then lay your scene over the top of it with a you know, a built-in quote or something like that. And you can work your uh, card around, uh, you know, the quotes that you print out on this type of thing. So, um, you know, singular purpose, I think, is what it was conceived for. But um, when it, in our hands as card makers, I think we can really serve a, a multiple type of purpose, you know, for us in terms of whatever applications we want to use it for. So pretty fascinating. Um, yeah. And I'm not even talking about printing on it. So anyway, can't wait to use it. I've got a lot of experimenting ahead of me just to see uh, what type of inks and uh, media are compatible with it. And can't wait to do that. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy this uh, content and whatnot, hope you think about subscribing, uh, commenting, and sharing.